Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, regular listeners will know all about a company called Vuzix. And you might even remember their CEO, Paul Travers, who we last spoke to. I think it was just after CES in 2020. And we were both blissfully unaware at just how much the world was about to change. And since we've last spoke, they have unveiled Vuzix Shield, which is a revolutionary leap for enterprise AR smart glasses. Because they're lightweight, stylish, prescription-ready safety glasses. And for techies, it's got a powerful 8-core CPU to deliver a singular wearable experience. In a nutshell, imagine a pair of augmented reality glasses that look like a pair of Oakleys. That is their main focus. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to New York, where Paul is waiting to join us one more time to share some of the many developments and milestones since we last spoke, and also talk about how Vuzix technology is allowing people to easily connect themselves to the metaverse. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yes, for sure, Neil. First, thank you for inviting us on the show. Um, I'm Paul Travers, the president of Musics Corporation. We're corporate headquarters is in Rochester, New York. Um, we make smart glasses for primarily the enterprise space today. But, you know, we've been at this for a while. In fact, this is our 25th year anniversary, believe it or not. And (laughs) we started making, like everybody in this industry, big kind of bulky things that are hard to wear and uncomfortable. And we were doing that for the U.S. defense markets. We made a product called TACI, which was honestly quite, it was small and trim and, but not but not with a computer in it. <laughs> and it was designed to plug into the tough books or throw a robot in a building and they could drive it around through the eyepiece as they were wearing it and looking into this wearable viewfinder. And the special forces guys asked us if we could make Oakley style sunglasses with computers in them, the whole thing so that they could get rid of their tough books and all these batteries they were carrying around and the likes. So we have been over the years striving to ultimately get to this form factor that is what people really want to wear. Almost nobody likes to look like they just stepped off the Starship Enterprise, especially (laughs) after walking around outside, right? We've also found we we do a lot of work in the enterprise space, as I mentioned, and we found that if you can't put in eight hour day because it's heavy and it hurts to wear, it's never going to be effective and used in the real world. So today we have a line of smart glasses. You put them on, they're like these beautiful little computer sticks that sit on the side of the mounting systems, which we have many different ways to mount these things. There's an eyepiece in front of your eye with a beautiful OLED display. It's almost like the retinal display on an iPhone, as they used to refer to them. It's OLED, so it's super high contrast. And then there's a camera out the front, and all this thing is connected with an eight-core processor over the internet. And we have folks that do all kinds of stuff in enterprise with that. You know, that said, we're striving to get to the point to where we can make these Oakley style sunglasses, which is the ultimate goal, I think, for everybody in the augmented reality space. And we last spoke, I think it was two years ago. It was around about February 2020. You'd just been to CES. I think you'd won a stack of awards for, I think it was a smart swim product back in the back uh, then and uh, you, you could even like, watch Netflix while you were having a swim for example and it, it was an amazing conversation and of course that was a month later the world would completely change so how have you been over the last two years and how, how has the last two years been because the world is a different place now isn't it yes it sure it sure is and you know quite frankly not to COVID actually was a good thing for music's business yeah it's hard to believe you could ever say anything that about something like that but (laughs) what happens is right i mean how do you get into a hospital or an operating room theater if they won't even let you in the front door yeah and how do you visit your plants in china or in asia someplace when you can't get on an airplane to get there kind of stuff right so our smart glasses are really good at doing quote unquote telepresence where you have an expert that's sitting in 
an office or at home because he can't get to the office. He's connected to an internet portal, much like a Zoom call kind of a thing. There's a guy that's at the warehouse or he's in the operating theater. And in fact, we've even got product in Ukraine right now in some of the hospitals so that those doctors can get help from experts. And literally the expert can sit in a, a nice office on the West Coast, let's say. They're experts, let's say, at blunt traumas. They can turn on the internet connection. Basically, the guy that's wearing the glasses, the doctor that's wearing the glasses, he's a connected through a special Zoom HIPAA compliant call. The expert doctor can literally draw on the screen and see exactly what that doctor seeing like it was standing right next to him to help him perform that operation. So you might imagine with COVID and no travel and how do you get remote work done? Th this has opened up doors all over the place for remote support, and those kinds of things. And there's probably not an a hour of the day that goes by where our glasses are not being used in the medical field for exactly those kinds of things for med tech services and training purposes and the likes. And I think I'm right in saying that CES did come back this year. It was, it was on a smaller scale. And I think you guys unveiled Vuzix Shield, which is a, a leap for enterprise AR smart glasses. But can you tell me more about your CES experience this year and, and how that was received? Yeah, uh, you're right. CES was smaller. That's for sure. Um, yeah. You know, there's usually lots of press that go to CES and there wasn't as many this year as there normally is, which it's understandable, right? I mean, coming off of COVID or trying to come off of COVID. That said, we had a really good show. Our booth was packed the entire time. You know, I mentioned earlier that we're trying to make ultimately Oakley style sunglasses. The fence guys called it the Oakley gate, which was <laughs> kind of an interesting term. The shield uses Musix's advanced waveguide optics. We, we have optical systems now that are optically see-through that we produce here in Rochester, New York, that are thin as a regular pair of lenses and a pair of glasses. And what you do is in, instead of having a, a lens and the display on the other side of the lens, like a VR headset that you can't see through, in this case, you put the display in the temple of the glasses and it's got a little projection engine on the front of it. And that projects into this lens that's a thin, literally it looks like a window or just a regular pair of glasses, lenses. You inject the light in there, it bounces off the front and back surface toward and away from the eye until it gets in front of your eye. There's a holographic surface or structure that's right there that you, you can't normally see with your naked eye. But when you look into these lenses, out in front of you is this beautiful virtual image in space. And we brought our first binocular pair in our shield glasses, and it, it's just it's probably the best AR engine of any smart glass that's out there today. We can build correction or focus into the lenses themselves. So when you look in these glasses, about a meter and a half away from a focus perspective, that's where the virtual image is. And of course it's in 3D, left and right eye, and the imagery sits about a meter and a half away. So it's so comfortable. It's exactly what your eyes are expecting to see. There's no focus rivalry. There's no convergence rivalries. and it looks really cool. If you go to our website, we've got some pictures of the shield and the front end of these babies look like a conventional pair of Oakley style glasses. Admittedly, there's big processors on the side and batteries, all that stuff's coming down too. Um, it's possible to do this for a couple of reasons. Number one, our waveguides are amazing and we can produce them in volume here in Rochester. And then the other piece is the display engine. In this case, it has a micro LED display. Most people are using front lit displays like at Alcos or a DLP, and they use three LEDs to light this thing up like a flashlight would. And then it goes red, blue, green, red, blue, green. And then that's got a lens on the outside of it. So it's a big thing, right? You got a, a display. Every pixel's on all the time. It's the size of a pack of gum, and it sits in the temples. This micro LED, it's self-emitting. So every pixel is its own LED. You don't need to have this flashlight system. So it's really compact. It's a, it's thin. It's uh, half a millimeter thin, right? So it's tiny. And then all you need is the lenses in front of this thing. So literally it's the size of a pencil eraser. So you've got this little tiny pencil eraser in the temple and there's beautiful thin waveguides in the front. So you have this look and feel of conventional, conventional style glasses. And we have our own group now, the company called Atomistic that we purchased, that's making our own micro LEDs that will be full color over the coming 
period of time. It's going to take a little while to get there, but this is going to make it so smart glasses look like Oakley style sunglasses, and it's going to be what everybody wants to buy. Unlike competitive products, which are quite big and bulky, full up spatial computing, really cool kits. I mean, you know, HoloLens, Magic Leap. I mean, these things are very interesting and amazing gizmos, but they're big. And it's not, like I said, when we started, people don't want to look like they just stepped out the Starship Enterprise. They want to look and feel like they're part of the real world and fashion forward glasses are going to be important to make that happen. And that's where our focus is at Musix, lightweight, all day wearable and fashion forward. And this technology is all coming to the fore now. And our shield is really the first full up binocular system that's especially using micro LEDs. I'm just thinking the, the possibilities of this. So, so who are you aiming at? Is it like the manufacturing industry, healthcare, deskless workers, or, or are you still working that out at the moment? Uh, we, it's in warehouses today. Yeah. Um, it's in manufacturing on plant floors. It's doctors that are in the operating theater. Uh, it's in training applications. As you might imagine in enterprise, there's an unending list of places where this technology can make a big difference. And it's finally wearable all day long, right? So that's great for our enterprise products. And you know we have a series of products that we're improving and getting better and better at. The other piece, Neil, we these waveguides that we manufacture and the the display engines that we're going to be coming out with, they're really the broader markets. Ultimately, these things are going to replace the phone. So, you know, there's billions of phones sold on an annual basis, one and a half to two billion, based upon whose numbers you look at. But those numbers are tapering off. And there's not a major player out there that's not looking to the next thing. And smart glasses connecting the metaverse to the real world through AR glasses, like what Vuzix build, and the underlying technology to make that happen. Most of the big OEMs are, are looking for solutions that they can bring to market. And the Vuzix is offering our engines and our waveguides to those companies. This is new for us. It's only been over the last, officially over the last maybe three or four months. But we have a pretty nice list of companies that are coming to Vuzix now looking for sources for these devices. And before you came on the podcast today, I recently read that your glasses now support Microsoft Endpoint Manager to help streamline device onboarding and provisioning for Microsoft Teams as well, which feels incredibly exciting. Do you have a, a use case just to help listeners understand how that could work in Microsoft Teams in their world? Well, it's it's Teams, it's Zoom, it's WebEx Teams, it's Cisco, you know, there's Blue Jeans, there's all of those applications run in our glasses today. Yeah. The key is, I mean, how do you deploy them if you have a thousand people in the field and you're, let's say, uh, uh, I don't know, let's pick a firm that would have that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you got guys that are, you know, climbing up telephone poles and the likes, and they've all got their devices, but they're not configured, yada, yada, yada. And so what happens because we support all these different mobile device managers, um, the corporate organizations and IT departments that manage these devices in the field literally can log into any one of them anywhere, update them, give them the today's uh, pick list or hit list of things they've got to get done. They basically can manage entirely just through a connection inside a server system that sits at the corporate office. Wow, incredibly cool. It really is. And uh, I'm curious, what role do you see yourselves playing in, in the future of the deskless workforce? Because there's so much going on there, isn't there? And uh, I think there's something like, uh, is it 80%? I, I can't remember the exact stat, but it's an overwhelming proportion of people in deskless jobs that people don't think about. But what role do you see yourselves playing in creating new opportunities and enabling this workforce? Yeah, I mean, we currently work with a lot of ISVs. Yeah. Uh, that's independent software vendors, guys who make applications that run in the mobility space. And we're expanding the number of applications that run on our devices through those partnerships. We've also got an internal team, a software group that's working on vertical software. So you'll, you'll see some direct SaaS-based applications coming from Vuzix that drives our products. Um, and then in the, you know, in the bigger picture, we're planning on being part of the broader markets by su supplying some of the core technology that's needed to make the glasses cool. So we've got our own 
wonderful ISV relationships that are growing. Our channel partners are growing at the same time. Those channel partners help sell the ISV software alongside our hardware. We bundle all of that stuff as final solutions at times. So you get from Vuzix, the warehouse picking software built onto the glasses, ready to turn on and go when you get it in your facility. And we we're doing that with an expanding uh, sales channel at the same time. And I've just found that stat. The deskless workforce comprises of 80% of the global working population, registering 2.7 billion. That's a phenomenal stat, isn't it? Yeah. And you think about that, Neil. A lot of those folks work with their hands. Yeah. So what, you give them a tablet and you're in the field and you need help and you, you're you holding on to the tablet and the tablet says, well, turn this screw. And you're like, how do I do that with a tablet in my hand? So it's back and forth and it's many operations compared to, I got the glasses on, I'm hands-free and you can just roll through stuff, which is why the ROIs can be pretty significant with wearable, with wearable tech. It also makes it easier to connect the metaverse to the real world. So, you know, you're seeing what you got to do in you're seeing the stuff in the glasses as a function of what you've got to do at the same time without going back and forth to a tablet. And if we were to bring everything we've talked about to life today and also add the conversations that you're having with your customers, are there any particular big trends in what your customers are, are asking for your help with? Are you getting the same repeated questions? Smart glasses are a new paradigm. Yeah. You know, the, the work, steps and processes are different than what people normally do today. An example, I I can give you one in warehousing, packing pallets. It's a complex task. You, you give somebody a audio based headset today and a handheld barcode scanner, and they'll scan the box, the glasses, the headset audibly says, pick one, You do it, you do the scan, great. Then you got to know and be smart enough to put it on the pallet in the right place. So you're going back and forth, listening, barcode scanning, picking up boxes, doing your best effort to put it on the pallet. Think about this new way now. You've got our glasses on. The pick item shows up in the glasses. You literally just look at the box. It does an instant scan, hands-free. And then it shows a 3D representation of the pallet showing where you need to pack that part on the pallet so that the pallet is best packed so that when it shows up at wherever it's going, the material that's on that pallet isn't all beat up. So you can give this to a brand new employee. That, that's a job that can take months to learn how to do well. Because not, you know, you got to the skills of packing a pallet are not, it's just not natural. Um, but you can give this to a brand new person and with a week, they're packing pallets perfectly. But it takes time to get all that integrated. It takes time for the software to be running right with the back end, the IT departments to approve everything. So there's this whole process that you go through to go from test driving and the likes to getting it actually deployed in a bigger way. And that happens all over the place. That's just one example. The nice thing about remote support is it's really become standard fare for smart glasses. You, literally the applications, you, you, any one of the applications as I mentioned earlier, it's a tap of a button and you're in it. So it's, it's, it's plug and play now. It's incredibly cool. And one of the things I love about what you guys do is each year you turn up at CES, seem to win a stack of innovation awards. And I've got to ask, what's next for you? Where do you go from here? And is it too early to ask for a CES 2023 teasers? It's too early for that. <laughs> You can't blame a guy for trying. No, I I know, Neil. That's okay. (laughs) You you know, uh, we're innovators. We're we're paving the path to the future. You know, we've been at it, like I said, for 25 years. We're probably one of the only wearable display tech companies that have survived over this amount of time still in the game. And we've done that because we are building and creating the future. It takes a lot of resources and energy and creativeness, but we've been at it for a long time. My crew here is got experience in the realities of this stuff more than most. And that's why every year you see improvements and upgrades and changes to what we do. And it's why our path is growing. And finally, the world is coming around to this whole augmented reality, metaverse, VR stuff. It's a, it's a category that's happening. And so it's getting easier 
to stand out and and show people the light for where this stuff is all going absolutely love it i think we'll have to get you back on the podcast for ces 2023 to find out more about what else you're going to be working on and one of the things that has changed since the last time we spoke two years ago is i always ask my guests to leave everyone listening with a personal touch of inspiration by sharing either a book that has inspired them or their go-to song or something that just helps them get their head in the zone or something that's important to them so what are you going to leave us with today and is there a story to accompany your choice it's interesting, Neil. I'll probably give you a similar answer I did last time. Because <laughs> I, I, I do read books, but mostly they're technical journals and stuff yeah. like that around the technology that we're working on. There's so much I could inspire folks with around, you know, micro LEDs and, and that, whole, that, that whole endeavor and how difficult it is, but how cool some of the stuff is that we're doing that's game changing in the art of the possible for high efficiency, small micro LEDs, but it, it would probably bore everybody. Um, you know, Vuzix is, we're having fun. Uh, we're focused on the future of where this stuff is going. It's never easy. I think if you look at where we've come from, it's a sure sign that it's taken a lot of work and effort. And I would leave with, if you quit, you'll never get there. What can I say? absolutely love it well thank you so much for coming back on the podcast today we will get you back on uh, for ces 2023 but before i let you go obviously everything we've talked about here this is an audio podcast people are going to want to see it in action they're going to want to check out videos and specifications and everything and see it in the flesh can you point everyone listening in the the best direction of, of finding yeah. all this information and, and also contacting your team if they've got any questions Yep, absolutely. Um, first of all, we are a public company. If you go to our website, uh, vuzix.com, that's vuzix.com, there's you know information on our public filings and everything we are about being a public company. That's vuzi on the NASDAQ and technical information, product information, everything else is right there on the website. It's, it's actually a pretty good website. There's onboard help with Q and A and that sort of stuff right off the website. And you can contact through any of the forms on that thing to get further, further help. Well, I've absolutely loved chatting with you again. We've covered a lot once again in a short amount of time from how you're supporting Microsoft Endpoint Manager to streamline device onboarding and provisioning for Microsoft Teams and also addressing the, the future of the deskless workforce. It's a pleasure as always. And I look forward to chatting with you again in a few months and seeing what you've got in store for us then. But thanks as always. Yeah, we look forward to coming back, Neil. Thank you for the time. As I said a few moments ago, talking about these glasses on an audio podcast, we can only fuel your imagination around the possibilities and the art of the possible. And I think the best thing to do is check out the website, check out their YouTube and check out some of the videos of how this is working and try and imagine the possibilities that smart glasses can bring to deskless workers who are 80% of the workforce or should I say 2.7 billion people on the planet. It is incredibly cool, and also the technology and the glasses themselves look amazing, and I do urge you to check them out. But please let have a look. Let me know your thoughts. Email me now, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, at Neil C. Hughes. And uh, I'm really curious on what you make of these glasses. Would you wear them? And also, what use cases would you have for them? So keep those messages coming in. I'll be back again tomorrow. We'll talk about an entirely different topic. But thanks for listening today. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.